Hey, what's going on guys? This is the next episode of our real life series where we're taking a look at some pretty heavy stuff, some, um, but some things that are real, like part of real life, and we want to address them um, and see what the Bible says about them. Um, some things that we can tend to keep in the dark and not talk about, we just want to address them because they're part of real life and look at some ways that we can fix it biblically and practically as well. So this week we're gonna be looking at mental illness. Um, 2020 has been a really, really rough year. Yeah. It's been just the, the worst. Um, there's been um, a spike, a big spike in mental illness, a big spike in people suffering from depression and anxiety. And, um, and we just want to address it. We just want to talk about it real quick because and the church doesn't talk about it a whole lot. So I wanted to give you guys a biblical perspective on what this is like. Uh, because we know with the isolation that you guys are experiencing, we know with the uh, separation and the just the different, um, for those of you playing sports, you guys who can't play sports, there's just a lot, a lot going on, so much going on that we just, we felt really compelled that we should talk to you guys about this. So um, depression and anxiety are, are kind of the things that we're going to focus on. And, and I think in life... Uh, I've, I've gone like, I go in waves of like, sometimes I feel anxious and sometimes I feel down, but then I come back up and I'm normally okay. And I've always been able to kind of like ride those waves out. And um, there's been a few times in my life when I've needed to see a counselor. And I've talked to people about it and um, been a, like, I never had any like real traumatic things go on in my life um, to like really, it's just, just feel just kind of just in a slump maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if it would be depression, but... Um, but we know that there's a lot of people there that have dealt with some really traumatic, traumatic issues. And we know that this season could be especially trying for a lot of you guys. So, um, today let's talk about a couple of things that you guys can do to maybe walk, um, through this season. One thing I think we should, um, just before we jump into some of those ways, I think one thing we should make really clear is that this is not God's design. Like, mm. just because these things happen doesn't mean God wants them to happen or that he's the one that, that does them. Mm. Um, there's a way that as we sin that just our world gets affected and other people get affected. And even if it sometimes seems like it's no one's fault, like it's not coming from God. I think that's something that's really important that we stress. That God's heart is for all of his children to be at peace and to experience mm -hmm. joy and be in right relationship with him. And it, and it breaks his heart as much as it breaks our heart um, to hear about people that are going through those things. Um, and he's feeling that alongside us. I think that's something really important to, to stress. Yeah. I think before we go on any further, it's really important to address this as well. You know, there's probably uh, to go along with the spike in uh, anxiety and depression, there's probably also been a spike in self-harm and suicide. And uh, I want you guys to know that if you are struggling with self-harm or with suicidal thoughts or tendencies or anything like that, that it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to reach out to somebody. Actually, it's it's necessary. Um, so if you go to Shelter Cove and you're a part of Cove students, talk to Nathaniel or I, and we would love to talk with you and to meet with you and to walk with you through this season. Um, also, if, if you are feeling suicidal, there is a number. I'm going to put it right here. Uh, I want you to call this number. This is the, the suicide hotline number. And there's someone there that can talk to you at any time. You just got to give this number a call. Um, and again, if you go to Cove students, you can call me. You can call Nathaniel. We are here for you. Um, but you got to tell somebody if you're struggling with any of those two issues, those are, are serious things and, and not in a way that we're going to shame you or put you down or make you feel like you're a bad Christian because you feel like these things, uh, we just want to help you. We love you. And we want you to know that you're going to be okay. And it might not feel like it. And I know like, so in dealing with depression and anxiety, they never, that's the last thing they want to hear. But friends, you're going to be okay. God is with you. You can get through this. There's a few things that you can do that will set you up for success as you journey on this path to health. The first thing that you can do to kind of navigate through this season is make sure that you get a lot of sleep. Make sure you get enough sleep. 
I know that it's super easy to get uh, on TikTok or on YouTube or on Netflix or on your phone or on, well, fill in the blank with whatever it is and just stay up really late. Um, but it's really, really important that you get to bed at a good hour and that you wake up at a good hour. Um, that's going to set you up for success. Another thing that you could do that's going to help set you up for success uh, is exercise. Getting a good amount of exercise. Going outside in the sun, get that vitamin D. Um, go for a walk. Go play basketball. Go um, hang out with some f friends outside, socially distanced. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. There's still stuff to do, though. There's, There's still, still plenty to do. And the third way that you can set yourself up for success is to make sure that you're eating right. Make sure that you're eating healthy, that the food that you're eating is fuel and not just food. Like, it's not just stuff to, to feel good. Don't eat your feelings. I'm talking to myself right now. Sleep well, exercise, and have a good, healthy balanced diet. Those three things, if you do those three things, the, there's uh, chemicals in your body that just kind of work themselves out and they kind of, they really, really does help your body almost reset itself. Um, and great, great tools for you guys to be able to do. That's just practical, easy. Um, on top of those things that are just really important for your body to be able to recuperate, um, there are some spiritual things that you can do as well that really could help you navigate through this season as well. Nathaniel's going to read a passage from Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. And in it, you're going to see kind of how God presents this idea of how we can find peace in the middle of anxious seasons. So it reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God that transcends all understanding. It came from presenting your requests to God through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Prayer and supplication is essentially coming to the feet of Jesus and, and taking your request to him. Those things that you're feeling anxious about, those things that are weighing you down, bringing those to him into his presence and, and handing them over. And here's something that I really, really want you to know is that in order to find the peace of God, you must be in the presence of God. You will not find the peace of God without the presence of God because it is his presence that gives us peace. If you need to find peace in your heart, if you need to find peace in your soul, are you spending more time with your phone than you are with God? And I'm saying that with all the love in my heart because I know that that's my go-to is just to distract myself from whatever's going on. But there is no way that you can find peace outside of the presence of Jesus in your lives. So take your requests to Jesus, bring them to him, pray to him, talk to him, be with him, and watch as his presence brings you his peace. The next verse that I want you guys to read is in Matthew chapter 6. Nathaniel is going to take this one too. So in Matthew chapter 6, this is what Jesus says about being anxious. He goes on and he gives this picture. He talks about the birds of the air and he says, don't worry about what you're going to eat. The birds of the air, they don't collect food, they don't store it away, they don't worry about where their food comes from. God provides the food to the birds in the air. Jesus says, don't be anxious about where you're going to wear either. He says, God clothes the lilies, the flowers of the fields, and he makes them look beautiful, and they don't have to worry about what they're going to wear. So he gives this picture, and then he says this at the end. He says, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So in this, we can see that God is saying that I know exactly what you need. I know exactly what you need in your life, and I am going to give these things to you. And I think ultimately, it's on us to put our trust in that. And as someone with anxiety, when they hear that, it's hard. It's hard to hear that. But friends, our God is trustworthy. 
He is worth our trust and, and you can go to him and know that he knows what you need. He knows exactly what you need and he is a good father and he will give you the things that you need. Unfortunately, we don't always get to decide the things that we need. Yeah, um, it's probably better that way because he knows. Yeah, he knows. He'll give us exactly what you need. And then for maybe if you're struggling with uh, depression and, and there are countless verses about how the joy of the Lord is our strength and how the joy of the Lord brings you in. So friends, what I hope that you get out of this is although you can get exercise and eat right and sleep good, those are really good things to help your body. But if you want to find true and lasting joy and peace, you find those in the presence of God. And lastly, I just want to say this, if you really are struggling with a mental illness of depression or anxiety, sometimes that's a really serious issue and it's a legitimate mental disorder where there's a chemical imbalance. And if I have a headache, I take Tylenol. And if I have a cold, I take Tylenol, cold and flu. Allergies, Central Valley, allergies. I take Benadryl. If I'm sick, I'm gonna take medicine. I think that it is okay for you to talk to a counselor and see if medication is right for you. I'm not saying that it's right for all the time for everybody, but there are absolutely cases where medication is helpful. So don't feel shame or that you uh, shouldn't talk to a counselor or seek medication because both of those things are good things for you to be able to have uh, to help you walk through this season. Ultimately, we can know that our hope and our peace and our joy is found in Jesus Christ and Him alone. It doesn't come from people, it doesn't from, come from counseling, it doesn't come from meds, it comes from Jesus. We know that this is a hard season. We are with you, we are praying for you, we love you. It's gonna be okay. God is with you, He loves you, He cares for you and he will walk with you through this season that you find yourself in. God bless you guys. Have a great week.